the Boilermaker faithful making their way over to the Boiler Box, one of the great venues in all of Big Ten women's volleyball, as these fans are ready for the first serve between Northwestern and Purdue as we get started with the Northwestern Wildcats. The lineup's brought to you by Tachi Kara, and we look at the lineup for the Northwestern Wildcats. Stephanie Holtis, the All-American, Maggie Burnham, Kaylee Ryan, Katie Dutchman, Kayla Maureen, and Savannah Paffin two freshmen in the starting rotation for Northwestern. The libero is Caroline Ball, who we will see throughout the match. Take a look at the starters for the Boilermakers. Val Nickel, we talked about how vital she is to this team. Rabarchek, Fox, Jones, Analajaw, and Drews out on the floor. And you see Carly Kramer on the right-hand side of your screen, the libero for the Boilermakers. Boiler block in full effect, always out for these matches and showed up in full force last night against Illinois. And you look at the head coach and Dave Shondell in his 11th season for Purdue. 2011 Big Ten Coach of the Year has led Purdue to eight NCAA tournament appearances. Head coach for the Northwestern Wildcats, Keeler Chan, just earned his 200th career victory with the Wildcats last night in the five-set win against Indiana. Both of these teams coming in at two and three in the Big Ten Conference after wins last night, got off to slow starts, but now in a position to make some noise in the conference. Yeah, when you have the same win-loss record as your opponent, you know that this is a vital match. So both teams ready to play and both teams are gonna work hard for a win tonight. See a young team for Northwestern. Feels like they have enough talent, though, for Keeler Chan to pull off these road wins. Road wins so vital in the Big Ten. It's what separates the top of the pack from the rest of the field in the conference. See Carly Kramer. Always a bunch of smiles from Carly Kramer. Produced leader who's been a little less energetic. <laughs> Chosen her moments to bring the energy to this Purdue team. That's right. She is a spark plug, and here you see her chatting it up with her front row. It'll be the Boilermakers to serve to start this match off. Short float serve creates the overpass. Good up by Kramer. Rabard check off the block and down. The key dig in the backcourt, Rabarczyk, you know, Shondell talks about how important his pin hitters are going to have to be. He likes his middle attack. He thinks that they produce big numbers, big percentage. Uh, but the pin hitters are going to be vital tonight. Holtis goes off the block, and it's in play as it comes down to the block for the Boilers. Well, she's got a heavy arm and a high flyer, but she is one of the key offensive players for Northwestern, so Purdue's block will really zone in on her. Chance for Katie Dutchman on that right side. She came into the middle. Doesn't go over the net for Rabarczyk and the first point for the Wildcats. You know, and those are the types of errors that Shondell does not want to see. That's an easy roll shot. Just put the ball in play and then see if you can block and dig for a point. So Rabarczyk uh, would sure like to have that swing back. Abby Krause in to serve for the Wildcats. Here's Annie Drews off the block. It touched her on the way out. So the point to Northwestern. Now, Annie Drews on that particular hit, she looked like she was trapped. The set was a little bit tight. And when the ball hit her, obviously she was so close to the net. Nichols setting in the middle. Dutchman goes off the block. Dutchman hitting on the right side. That's a way for Northwestern to spread out their offense a little bit. She was a middle attacker, so moving her to the right side allows that ball to be set pin to pin. Guard check again in the floorboards. Now that's a sweet swing. Now look at this hammer. A good pass, nice tempo set, and you can see that she's hitting over top of that block. Rubarczyk missed seven matches earlier this year with an abdominal strain. And now back in there for the Boilermakers doing work early on. Here's Holtis on the tip. 
Annie Drews terminates. Well, Drews hitting high off the blocker's hands. We saw a good transition volleyball there. Defensively, you have got to drop your inside shoulder if you're a right back player to keep the ball in play. Your platform has got to face the net. Mitchell sets in front to Kiki Jones, who does get a touch call, and Purdue up 5-3 in the first. And Kiki Jones has been so good. I love seeing players evolve, and this kid has gotten better and better every time I see her out on the floor. Kiki Jones, a junior out of Fishers, Indiana. Savannah Paffin goes down the line, but does not touch anything. Kramer still serving for the Boilermakers. Continuing to cause problems with the short serve. That's what the Boilermakers like to do. Yeah, the short serve is so effective here in this rotation. Take a look at where it lands right inside that 10-foot line. And so there's a little bit of hesitation. Should that middle front player take it or the back row player? Big swing from Holtis, but doesn't get that back line. Typically serve short to get the middle out of the offense. So the middle player is out of the offense and they know that the ball will go out to Holtis. So good serving strategy by Purdue. 8-3 start for the Boilermakers in the first set over Northwestern. And Purdue coming off a win last night against Illinois in Mackey Arena where they had over 5,000 fans in attendance. And you can see just how good the atmosphere is here inside the Boiler Box. Fans always show up in droves for this Purdue team as we look at the keys for the Boilermakers. Well, for Purdue, they have to contain the outside hitter. We talked about Holtus and how deadly she can be. And then Purdue wants to have a balanced attack. Turner is gone. They've got a lot of players that can swing on the Purdue side of the net. So they want to spread out that offense. Dave Shondell has said that the strength of this team is that balance as we look at the keys for the Wildcats. Well, for Northwestern, they want to keep Purdue out of system. They have three attackers at all times because they run a 6-2. So keep Purdue out of system so that it's easier to track down the hitters. They also offensively want to hit seams in Purdue's block. Talked about the Boilermakers running that 6-2. What led to that decision for Dave Shondell? Well, I think Shondell has to look at the people on his roster and figure out what system is going to work best for the personnel that he's got. And right now, he's got Val Nickel, who is a great setter, but can swing very hard. He's got Rachel Davis, another great setter. He also has a lefty, Annie Drews, who will play that right side and swing on that side of the court. So he takes a look at who he's got and implements the best system that will work for his team difference from the Ariel Turner-led teams of the past few years for Purdue. It's Kaylee Ryan with the back set to Dutchman for the point. Well, you see how Ryan goes pin to pin, setting back set here. She's past half, does a nice job of setting the pin, and you can see exactly where Dutchman went, outside of the blocker's hands, but in between the antenna. Nice shot. See, Charlie Kramer wanted that one back, thought it was going to go long, but she touched it. Block is there again for the Boilermakers. Very predictable offense for Northwestern on transition. There was no middle attacker up. You can see the block ready. Look at that extension over the net. Perfectly executed by Purdue's front row. Purdue, one of the better blocking teams in the Big Ten. Fourth in, fourth in the conference coming into this match. There's Paffin. Real with the up. Holtis off the hands of the Boilermaker block. Good shot by Nita Spall. Results in the chance in the overpass with a solo stuff for Paffin. Hey, good effort by Nita Spall. The libero for Northwestern to keep that ball in play. So look at that save.
for the Wildcats. Boilermakers chose to let it go, and it falls in. Well, you got to serve aggressively at this point if you're Northwestern. Put some pressure on Purdue's passers and see what they can do. Holtis is a great server. Kayla Maureen, a freshman, and she did not get a hit on that ball. Well, the ball really wasn't set very well, but regardless of the set, you've got to be able to keep the ball in play. Unforced errors will kill you, and that was just a poor hit by Maureen. And Anil in for the Boilermakers to serve. Anthony with another chance, but the solo stuck for Sam Epinesa. Well, you talk about Sam Epinesa, and you talk magical. Look at that block right there, containing a big time slide attack on the other side of the net. That's for Epinesa on the swing this time, and she gets her first kill of the match. Sam Epinesa is undersized, but she touches 10-3, 10-4, and has a hammer of an arm, and she's learning some new shots. No longer is she just hitting the predictable shots. We'll keep an eye on, on whether or not she's able to execute some of those sharp cross-court angles that Shondell was telling us about. We see Savannah Paffin try to go cross-court for the Wildcats, and she does get Northwestern the point. And she'll head back to serve. with the bump set to Maureen. Davis to Nickel, the two setters trying to connect for Purdue. And it's Kiki Jones for that back corner. Well, Kiki Jones cleans it up, and you can see Northwestern really on the defensive here. They'll get the dig, but send a second contact over. That time, Kiki Jones finding the open court in the right back area. Too much from Kayla Marine out of play, and Purdue doubling up the Wildcats here in set one. Western taking the timeout as they're down here in the first, and Purdue holding on to this seven point lead in set number one. Welcome back to the Boiler Box, where Purdue has a 14-7 lead in set number one over Northwestern. And the Boilermakers looking for back-to-back -back wins in Big Ten play for the first time this season. It's Maggie Burnham who terminates for the Wildcats. Oh, that's a nice-looking offensive swing by Burnham, running the slide, and I like the way Kaylee Ryan was courageous enough to set it. It wasn't a perfect pass. She was at, at about the 10-foot line, so nicely executed there by Northwestern. Kramer will back set up Vanessa. A chance for the Wildcats, but it's a bump set from Nita's ball right to Maureen, and Purdue read it perfectly. Well, that's a pretty big Purdue block to hit around. You got Val Nickel. Let's take a look at it. Swing blocking there. You know, and that's an area of Val Nickel's game that Coach Shondell said has improved so much. Every aspect of her game has gotten better, but blocking on that right side has been crucial. This time on the right side for the Wildcats, it's Dutchman who tools the block. Good aggressive swing. She goes for the hands off that slide. Northwestern would like to see the ball in her hands a little bit more. That would mean that the offense is being spread out pin to pin. Nickel to Faye Adelajo, and Northwestern cannot block the freshman for Purdue. Yeah, she gets up so quickly and then sees the hands. She's been such an improved player. You know, she wasn't supposed to even start this year. Kaisley Fisher was supposed to start and then got injured. So uh, Faye Adelaja got the nod, and she's been real good for Purdue. Purdue really only working with two middles on their roster. 
Kiki Jones and Faye Adelajaw. And another point for the Boilermakers. And Dave Shondell has said that early on, Adelajaw has really become the heart and soul of this team. Just as a redshirt freshman, she's got that character and the personality that the team likes. Yeah, and I think as teammates, you like seeing the underdog get in there and then not only play, but do a lot of positive things. So yes, she's brought a lot of positive energy to her team. The one-handed set from Ryan does not go for the Wildcats. And we're due seven points from taking the first set. down and the tip from Rabarchek finds an opening on the floor. Well nice kill by Rabarchek but let's talk about produce block. Even if they're not getting stuff blocks they're getting good touches on the ball which opens up these opportunities. Your back row is able to control the dig and your in system. Holt is still trying to get going for the Wildcats and she's long. Yeah, making a few too many errors. Her team really needs her to just pound the ball down. And again, it's somewhat predictable when she's in the front row. Although they do move her around, she doesn't only hit at the pin, she'll hit in the middle of the court as well. This time from the pins, cross court out of play. And the air's mounting for Northwestern and a different sense from last night against Indiana where they were not high air, high air so far in this first set. Absolutely, and you're not going to win against this Purdue team on their home court if you just blast the ball out of bounds. And the one-handed set attempt by Ryan, but there's going to be a lift call against Northwestern, and this first set has gotten away from the Wildcats. Yeah, it most certainly has. Uh, I'm sure Killer Chan would like to see uh, his team fight back a little bit, but in reality, uh, this one could be going to Purdue very quickly. Well, Keeler Chan said he was very impressed with the resolve of his team last night against Indiana to win in five sets on the, ro on the road and not back down. Right now, they need to show some resolve in this first set. There's Dutchman trying to fire up her teammates. Yeah, nice swing by Dutchman to keep a minute. And that short serve for Purdue takes the middle out of the offense and then the blockers for Purdue can release. That time, she wiped it off the blockers' hands, but nonetheless, that seems to be Purdue's game plan. Serve short and know that it's going to the pins. He drews on the tip and gets it to fall. Well, I like the way she disguised it. Arm was pulled back, and then at the last minute, drops that elbow. And as a defensive player, you want to stay on your feet. You want to run those balls down until you touch it and then dive after you play the ball. Kramer again serving for the Boilermakers. The chance for Dutchman. Diving as Kramer saved the ball, but miscommunication and timing between Nickel and Jones. And you saw Purdue that time serving hard to Stephanie Holtis and took her completely out of the offensive pattern as a swinger. But nonetheless, you've got to be able to dig and transition and attack. Purdue wasn't able to score on that play. Real to serve for the Wildcats. Rabarczyk with a big swing and a great first set from Catherine Rabarczyk. Yeah, lots of angle to hit at there, but I like how she hits deep. Take a look at it again. Middle blocker for Northwestern was nowhere in sight. It was a free shot there. From Rabarczyk. Set point for the Boilermakers. And Rabarczyk continues her solid play against Purdue. Hit 365 in two matches, excuse me, against Northwestern last year for the Boilermakers. To Rabarczyk to end the first. Good up by Nita Spall. Out of the back row, Maureen gets a touch, and Northwestern keeps the first set alive. And you can see Purdue. Everyone's looking at each other like, did you touch it? I didn't touch it. Did you touch it? <laughs> gets under that ball. And Boilermakers can't get it over, so Wildcats stringing together a couple of points. Dave Chanel, not happy. No, not at all. Rachel Davis is setting. She's in the backcourt. That ball came up to the net a little too quick for her, and she couldn't recover. 
out of play on the service there. That'll do it in set number one. Boilermakers take it 25 to 13. And the Wildcats need to correct some of the errors that cost them in the first set as we'll switch sides of the net. Boilermakers on top, one set to zero over Northwestern as Purdue got it going on their home floor. Purdue takes the first set over Northwestern inside the Boiler Box as the Boilermakers trying to win their second consecutive Big Ten match. And now for the State Farm State of Success, this Purdue team under Dave Shondell, what they've been able to do, seven NCAA tournament appearances in the last eight seasons, and one of only six schools in the nation with six Sweet 16 bursts during that span. And a lot of credit goes to Dave Shondell. And one of the things he talked about, the growth of this program has come down to ball control. They have that as their calling card as a Purdue volleyball team. Yeah, he takes a lot of pride in that first contact. And as long as I've known Dave Shondell, he's worked on ball control and defense. He loves defensive-minded teams, and they're doing really well tonight. I'm particularly impressed with their blocking schemes right now. They're getting a lot of touches on the ball. And there you see number 11, Carly Kramer, great defensive player for Shondell. Dave Shondell getting four kills from Rabarchek, and then Annie Drews with three kills for the Boilermakers in that first set. Catherine Barczyk, as we mentioned, has played very well against Northwestern last year. 24 kills in two matches, hit 365, and off to a good start in this match as well. And came into the match talking about balance, and they've shown it so far. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? A part of being a good outside hitter is being able to chisel away at the block and learn your shots and when you can score with each shot. So. You know, it's a craft, and uh, you know, in high school, the block is a lot smaller. So as these kids come into the Big Ten program, they really need to learn what to do against a big time block. Western with the first point of this second set. They were able to rally against Indiana last night. Holtis out of the back row, too much. Point to Purdue. This is where the errors, you know, you want to try and keep the ball in play. If the set wasn't perfect, it wasn't as great as you wanted it to be, you've got to pick a corner to shoot the ball into. Just don't make an error. Kiki Jones connects, goes off the libero for Northwestern for another kill. Jones, a player that Dave Shondell has said has all the tools to be a first-team All-American at some point in her career. Seen her get a few kills so far tonight, but also great on the block. Has led this team in blocks seven times so far this year. Chance for a bar check down the line. Good up by Ryan. Drews on the right side with a left-handed swing. Well, you can see the hammer that she has, that lefty swing. Andy Drews, just a sophomore. You can see that she sees where the block is and goes right for the seam. Another player that Dave Shondell has very high ex expectations for in her career. They expected her to be the premier attacker for this Boilermaker team this year. And got off to a slow start, but still, you see the talent. Yeah, she has unlimited potential. She's got great size, and her foot speed is really good. You can see how dynamic she is on, on the approach. Dave Shondell right now having a discussion with the official. Not happy at the moment, and he's a coach you will always see up out of his seat. Still staring down the down official as he'll head back to the bench. Three ball sent over for Purdue. Holtis with a big swing, touch call. Yeah, touch in the backcourt. There you see the arm of Holtis. Lots of power. And she's only 5'11", so she's got to come in with that powerful approach and hit at the high point of the ball. There's Jones with another. Okay, good things happen for Purdue when Kiki Jones gets hot. Take a look at this pass. Look at her footwork here. She gets up, arm back, and she scores. That's all made possible because of a key serve-receive play. 
Mikey Jones, 25th in the nation in hitting percentage, fourth in the Big Ten coming into this weekend. As Dutchman goes cross court, does not catch that line. Blue right now doing a good job of serving short. It seems to be working for them. They're sticking to their game plan. Most every ball is landing right there on the 10-foot line or even in front of the 10-foot line. Let's go right back to Dutchman. The free ball almost turns into a point. Holtis gets another for Northwestern. And Holtis not, likes to go deep. That cross-court shot is deep in the left back area. Take a look at this nice set to the outside. And there's that nice angle shot. The deep ones are hard to get, Mike. Long run for Davis. Good chance for the Wildcats. Dutch on the right side. Whistling that ball down, point to Northwestern. Serving a little more aggressively. We saw Purdue in that last serve receive pattern out of system. The mistakes yep. just continuing to mount 11 attack errors in the first set for Northwestern. Hitting a negative number, throwing a service error as well, and giving away those points makes it very difficult to win on the road. Yeah, absolutely. You've got to play with a lot of intensity, and you can't inflict errors on yourself. So Northwestern right now, although they're in the second set, uh, have just self-inflicted way too many points. Keeler Chan has said that the opponents in the Big Ten are not going to make those kind of mistakes. And he knows his team can't give away this many points. A lot of sets to Dutchman, and Purdue has seen it as well, the block ready. Well, Holtis was shut down in the first set, so now they're trying to go to Dutchman. Can she get a couple kills? Right now, take a look at this block, perfectly reaching into the middle of the court. Dutchman stopped. Sam Epinesa for Purdue there on the block. Back to Holtis. Great effort by Amanda Neal, but that won't stay in play. All right, so this set from Northwestern is not all the way out to the pin, and I think it's a good thing to move Holtis around a little bit. She's got good feet. So don't always set the same ball to her and make her so predictable. If you move her around a little bit, she'll have different angles to hit at, and it's a different look for that Purdue block and backward defense. Is that part of an issue with dealing with a freshman setter, a former walk-on for this Northwestern team? Well, it is. It comes from experience. It also comes from ball control. You know, you can't move your outside hitter around if the ball isn't passed perfectly to you. So a lot of factors enable that you have to be in place and able to hit, uh, hit along the net in different spots. Stephanie Holt is the senior, working with a number of underclassmen, and Kaylee Ryan. True freshman setter for this team. Kiki Jones, the block, not able to do anything for Northwestern. Well, nice set there by Val Nickel, number two. Setting a back quick behind her. And then Kiki Jones is up in the air just waiting for it. And it's up to Val Nickel whether or not she wants to set that quick tempo or shoot it outside. So good choice. Halfing down the line. Neal with the up. Just able to keep out of the net, but she couldn't get a good pass over to Holtis. Yeah, I think they were trying for a faster tempo set where the there you see Holtis taking off a little early, so it's a quicker set to the outside of shoot, and yet the timing between her and the setter was way off. Short serve from Purdue. Just with a good swing this time. There's Neal once more with the dig. Nita's ball. Had that dig, but it's sent over. Holtis off the block. Well, there you see left side versus left side. It's a drill I used to love to do when I was helping Jim Stone at Ohio State. Which left side will prevail? This time, it is Holtis. And she will head back to serve. Monday at Kanbe into the match for Northwestern. And Epinesa has to run around. And the whistle will be called against Purdue to so the point to Northwestern. Yep, she played the ball outside of the playing surface, so that ball is out of bounds, and therefore it goes over to Northwestern. So 
numbers on Stephanie Holtis so far. They have a whistle on a double touch against Northwestern. A nice crossing play there from Purdue. The pass was perfect. We saw Val Nickel come around for a two ball. There was a quick attack, and then Val comes around. And so I like those types of plays. I love when setters set a varied offense. And to Paffin, who puts it into the floor. Paffin has done really well on that slide. When the pass is there, she is in motion. Let's take a look at her feet. She's running, running. The ball is set perfectly, and she's able to nail it down the line. Savannah Paffin coming off a big 10 high. Nine kills on 13 swings with zero errors last night against Indiana. Her best match of the Big Ten season so far. Holtis out of the back row. Tipped over by Adelajo. Akambe goes off Cruz. Well, Akambe has been like the best person to bring off the bench. She has been such a positive factor for Northwestern. She doesn't start, but when she gets the calling card, boy, she delivers kills like that. Keeler Chan has called her the closer as they bring her off the bench when they need a run. As Purdue gets one back in. Wanda Akambe, the junior out of Houston, Texas, came up with nine kills last night against Indiana. But that role is something that Keeler Chan feels like every Big Ten team has a player who can come off the bench and have a spark like Yawande Akambe. Hillary Fox to serve for the Boilermakers. Back to Akambe, block ready for Purdue. Another chance on the tip. Shot by Nita's ball to keep that alive. The bar check, it goes out of play, but it did touch a wildcat before it. Another kill for Catherine Rabarczyk. Well, sloppy play on both sides of the net. Good defensive gets, but that's the job of the outside hitter. you got to clean it up and get a kill. Can you terminate on a sloppy ball? Rabarczyk delivers for her team. Again, back to Akanbe and the stuff for the Boilermakers. For all the latest news, insight, and information on Big Ten Volleyball, follow BTN Volleyball on Twitter today. And you can use the hashtag B1G Volleyball to join in the conversation about the Big Ten Volleyball landscape. You can see it in the top right-hand corner of your screen, hashtag B1G Volleyball. Conbe, another chance and another kill. She's a positive person coming right off the bench. Getting a couple kills for her team. That's exactly what you want from number 79. See you one day, Akanbe wearing number 79, an unorthodox number in women's volleyball. And with the back set to Dutchman, block continuing to be in the right place for Purdue. Good rally going here. Drews ends it down the line. Now Kramer with a great set, the libero from Purdue. Giving Drews that perfect set. Let's take a look at that again. And then Drews, the hammer. Lawjaw into the tape, and the point will go to Northwestern. You mentioned before, Yuande Akanbe wearing that number 79. That's in honor of her brother who collapsed in February and passed away on a basketball court in a pickup game. That was the number he planned to wear when he went to go play for Montana State in football. And Yuande doing, honoring her brother with the number this season. Yeah, such a sad, sad situation. But like you said, wearing that number in honor of her brother is such a wonderful thing for her to do. Northwestern on top, 15 to 13 in the second set. Northwestern on top in the second set, but they trail in the match as Purdue is on top one set to zero. It is dig for a cure night here in the boiler block as you see the block party enjoying the evening, but everyone wearing pink in dig for a cure. Kiki Jones hits close to home for her, her grandmother battling breast cancer, a four-year fight for her, and she's now on the road to recovery. And a good night here to raise awareness for breast cancer. over that block and out of play. So out of the timeout, Purdue gets the point. That's crucial. 
When you rally your team in, you want to get that point out of the timeout. Purdue was successful. Ashman gets a good run on it. And Purdue can't get that off the floor. Northwestern still on top by two. Yeah, Northwestern's doing a better job of passing the ball and having various people attack. So good job by Northwestern to rebound after that poor first set. Service errors and other attack errors still haunting Northwestern as Maureen is long. the freshman out of Portage, Michigan. Competed with the U.S. Junior National Team. Mentioned how Keeler Chan excited to have her in this program, but so far a quiet night for Kayla Maureen. Yeah, absolutely. Dutchman away from the right side of the net, able to connect. See her rocking her shoulder back. Not sure what's going on with Katie Dutchman's shoulder. Hopefully she just had to work a little kink out. We certainly need her swinging on the right side. As Kiki Jones off the slide play terminates for Purdue. Well, once Kiki Jones gets in rhythm, you can see how hard she is to stop. That back quick, and then she hits it across her body. If you are Northwestern, you want your block to get hip to hip and take one shot away. Generally, hitters will hit back to position one, which is the right back area of the court. So you want to make sure you're taking that shot away. Holt is off the block, tooling for Northwestern. Wildcats trying to keep this going in the second set to try and even up the match. Yeah, Holtis gets kills any old way she can. Again, her touches off the block have been very successful, but we know that she can hit the perimeter, perimeter of the court as well, and she can also move along the net. So we're waiting to see her hit a few more sets that aren't all the way out to the pin. You can see Northwestern with the service errors. They get that two-point lead, but they cannot string together a larger lead because service error is costly as McGreal long on that last serve. Right, so now if you're Purdue, you want to give a little push here. You have control of the ball, serve tough, call out your blocking schemes, get touches. And Paffin again down the line for Northwestern. Yeah, she has been unstoppable on that slide, so Purdue needs to track her a little bit better. You can see where Kiki Jones is way in front of where Paffin is standing. So she ends up chasing after her instead of being there before she gets the set. Out of the back row, out of play. So now Northwestern with that three-point lead. And Val Nickel has so much to do as a six-rotation player and played a long four-set match last night for the Boilermakers against Illinois. And that takes its toll, especially with the five-set matches that we talked about. As a six-rotation player, how do you deal with that if you're Val Nickel? Well, I, you know, I think it comes in your training. I think these girls are physically fit, and they should be able to withstand five-set matches in back-to-back -back nights. Now, I would say mentally you've got to be tough and you've got to be able to fight through a few things. I think right now, probably Shondell is upset because her competitive spirit isn't rising to the occasion. That should have been a kill for Nickel. Well, Wednesday night on BTN, Northwestern hosts the Big Ten kills and points leader in Caitlin Leary and Ohio State in a volleyball clash. Coverage starts at 7.30 Eastern on BTN and BTN to go. Northwestern Volleyball on the Big Ten Network in Ohio State. Reeling a bit after a great start to the season. They've struggled as of late. They lost in five sets to Wisconsin last night. The Buckeyes did, and this Purdue team also beating Ohio State in straight sets. Northwestern trying to close out the second after falling in the first set. Proving their numbers in the second set, had just eight kills and 11 attack errors in the first set. In the second, 14 kills and six errors. Probably still a few more errors than they would like, but a better effort. That's absolutely right. Now we see Holtis back to serve. So their strong left side hitter is not in the front court, but look for her to get the set in the back court. 
unfortunately for the Wildcats on the air. They will give it back to Purdue. Now Val Nickel is serving, so she will be running the offense because she is in the backcourt. Conbe with another chance off the block. Point to Northwestern. Akambe just taking a little bit off, looking for the hands, and then just wiping it off. So it wasn't a hard shot. It was well placed. Yes, uh, Northwestern still hoping for that block, but it does not go down. Here's Akambe. The whistle will go on the double touch call. As Northwestern not having the setter set. Yeah, that I, I'm not sure well, who was setting that ball. I think it was Kaylee Ryan. And that was a double contact. Kaylee Chan not happy, but still two point lead and four points away from taking the second set. And a timeout for the Wildcats. And they're going to try to hold on in this second set. Northwestern on top by two in the second in West Lafayette. Western trying to close out the second set inside the boiler box while Purdue can put together a run with Hillary Fox serving, hoping to go up 2-0 just down by two points in the second. Right, Northwestern getting a lot of touches on Sam Epinesa's attack, slowing her down. Holtis out of the back row, and out of the timeout, Northwestern gets the kill they needed. Well, we talked about Purdue's block doing a good job in the first set, getting good touches. Now we're seeing bad touches. A lot of the balls are being deflected off their hands and out of bounds. Barchuk sticking with it. Look at the ball down, out of play, and a point to Purdue. Hitting error there from Northwestern. Slide attack has been working for them, but there you see number 14, Dutchman, with the error. Harley Kramer leads this Purdue team in aces. They'd love to have one right now. Kanbe with a good run up on the ball and the up in the back row by Fox. Dutchman goes off the block. And Northwestern, two points from a second set win. Hey, I got to give credit to the setter for Northwestern on that play, Kaylee Ryan. She's moving clear across the court and then dishes the ball back to the right area of the court. So that's good ball movement from the freshman setter. Another timeout on the floor as Northwestern, two points from taking the second set. We've seen tight battles throughout the Big Ten throughout the season. And Northwestern was in a tight match with Michigan early on, but then the Wolverines opened it up. And when we talked to Dave Shondell, he said that his team has typically had battles with Northwestern and that Michigan team. Yeah. So he knows coming into this match that he's going to be in for a long one. And right now, Northwestern looks like they might be able to take the second set. That's right. When you're playing these matches, very rarely is it a sprint. The conference isn't a sprint. So each match, you can't think you're going to beat a team three sets to zero. So you have to be ready for some, some good plays, some bad plays, and really try to just grit it out, grind it out, and take it as long as it needs to go. So Northwestern is really making this second set very interesting, putting a lot of pressure on Purdue. Can Purdue come back and win? It's a good test for them here in the second set. Boilermakers were able to come back in set four last night against Illinois. Did a much better job against Jocelyn Burks of the Illini as that match went on. They gave up 10 kills to her in the first set and slowed her down to just three kills in the second and third. And it, when it looked like Purdue was going to go to five sets last night against Illinois, they went on a run, and a big part of that was the play of Sam Epinesa. And Purdue was able to avoid a fifth set. So they are capable of coming back, especially from a three-point deficit. That's right. Epinesa's been a little quiet tonight, though. She really needs to get rolling. This with another swing. Good up by Carly Kramer. Free ball sent over. Zane Drews with a wind up and the kill. Now we talked about how important it is to have a strong right side hitter. 
and Cruz provides that, but look at this good set that she gets. And again, she's such a physical kid. She's hitting high over top of the block, and she never brings it down into the belly of the block. Five kills now for Annie Cruz. Up by Fox, a bump set. Northwestern throws it on the free ball. The block is there for the Boilermakers. And Dutchman with too much on it, and one point away now are the Boilermakers. Well, good job from Purdue's backcourt to know exactly where they are and to let that ball go. Another timeout for the Wildcats as they see Purdue drawing back in it here. And the Boilermakers down by just one point in the second set, trying to come back and take a 2-0 lead. Purdue trying to get back in the second set and tie this thing up. And you look at the balance between this year and the last couple of seasons. Ariel Turner in 2012, just about 40% of the total attacks in this year. Not a single player more than 20%. Much better balance for this Purdue team. Yeah, well, Turner was a great player, and Purdue was lucky to have her. But I always liked to see good offensive balance. I think it, it keeps people involved. It keeps them mentally in the game. So setters have a lot more fun and have a lot more versatility in terms of who they can set for the kill. And Holt is able to get the kill off the bump set. First set point for the Wildcats. Well, that's what the All-American will do for her Northwestern team. When the game is on the line, she will get it done. She's having a much better second set. Eight kills for Holtis. And a good job to better that last ball. Rabarczyk on the right side, though, for the Boilermakers. Well, I'm convinced you've got to have hitters that can swing from the right side. This time it's Rabarczyk. So good versatility in her so that she can hit from left side to right side. And the key to it is getting your feet to the ball so that ball's over your right shoulder every time. The Warmakers did play a due set last night in set one against Illinois. But Holtis ends the second set, and we're tied at one apiece. And Northwestern has renewed energy. That first set is behind them. They're not thinking about that one. They're thinking about winning this next set. Take a look at Holtis. Big hammer on the left. Stephanie Holtis leads the way in the second set for Northwestern as they take it 25-23. And we're all tied up at one set apiece as we go to the intermission in the boiler box. Tied at one set apiece in West Lafayette, Indiana. And the Boiler Box is rocking, trying to get their Purdue team back on top. Michael alongside Audrey Flaw. And Audrey, we saw Purdue come out strong in that first set, a 25 to 13 win. In the second set, though, they did not put together a performance that Dave Shondell was happy about, and they fell to Northwestern. Yeah, I feel like Purdue just quit competing, and so we'll see how they come out here in the third set. Northwestern riddled with a lot of errors, self-inflicted errors, hitting errors, and service errors. Well, those numbers are all in favor of Purdue right now, and the attack errors, 19 attack errors for Northwestern, hitting under 100, and then block 7-1 to one for Purdue. Yeah, Purdue in the first set not only was getting some stuff blocks, but good touches, but look at that hitting percentage. If you are not hitting better than 200, boy, that's not real good. So Northwestern squeaking out a win there in the second set, but clearly their errors have got to get cleaned up. Well, Stephanie Holt has got it going in the second set, though, for Northwestern. She's got nine kills so far. Yeah, she's been a positive uh, highlight on that left side. She struggled in the first set, but we see her game coming on here in the second set. Take a look at those powerful swings from her. She's really getting her team going. Dutchman also with nine for the Wildcats. They did get going in the second, but Annie Drews for the Boilermakers coming through on the right side. Well, Drews is such a powerful hitter on the right side. You see her lefty southpaw arm swing there, getting a lot of sets both in system and out of system, and she's been delivering nicely for her team. Annie Drews coming off a season high last night with 12 kills at 261 against Illinois. And Trying to add to the numbers she has so far with five kills. 
for the Boilermakers. And Stephanie Holt is not hitting for a high number, but she gets so many swings that she will eventually get her kills. That's right, and she has that determined look on her face. She's going to work hard to get this third set. Start of the third set, and it's Dutchman for the Wildcats, starting with the point. All right, so when you can set middle, it means a couple things. One, the pass is there, and two, your setter has confidence in you. Dutchman is a redshirt junior, so she's got a lot of playing time under her belt. She wants the set. Her, along with Holtis, will determine the win-loss of this team. Now to play on the air, and another service air for the Wildcats. That's number six now in the match for Northwestern. You talked about it earlier, the decision by Keeler Chan to move Katie Dutchman from the middle to the right side. Do you like that decision, considering that she led this team in blocks each of the past two seasons? Well, I think she definitely has blocking numbers in the middle that were very solid. However, offensively, they couldn't get her the ball enough, and so I think the decision was made based on her being more of an offensive threat. She does a good job blocking that left side hitter on the opposite side of the net. So Dutchman's numbers blocking aren't what they used to be, but they're still pretty strong. She has good blocking ability from the right side of the court. Dutchman into double figures now in this match. Kiki Jones with the kill for Purdue. Nice high shot off the blocker's hands. I like how she makes herself available. Take a look at the timing. Jump set there by number two, Val Nickel, perfectly executed. and behind the center off the touch of the Boilermakers. You know, it's a hard move when the ball goes off the block, but I do like it when I see defensive players making an effort for the ball. So, yeah, it was going to be impossible to get, but go take a couple steps. I think it shows a lot about your mental toughness and how into the set you are if you're going hard after balls. Real out of the back row, joust at the net. Western still keeps it in play. And Kanbe off the block. And Griffin into the match for Purdue. And Kanbe goes off the antenna and the point to the Boilermakers. None of the ball can touch the antenna on that attack as she was swinging through. The ball hit the antenna, and therefore the ball goes to Purdue. Amanda Neal will head back to serve. Dave Shondell said that it was Amanda Neal and Hillary Fox who deserve a lot of the credit for the Boilermakers' win last night against Illinois. Yeah, because they're great passers. They did a good job of controlling the first contact. And you see Northwestern not controlling the first contact results in an overpass. Yeah, that serve pass game is so important. Right now, Purdue is kind of going away from their game plan. I'm not seeing them serve a lot of balls short. They seem to be picking on certain players. We'll see where her serve goes. Clipping the net and the <laughs> ace for Amanda Neal. She got really lucky on that one. Neal six in the Big Ten in service aces with that number 18 for her on the year. Well, the serving target that time is clearly Stephanie Holtis on Northwestern side. Time she ends up, ends up getting it to her. That, uh, the net certainly helped a lot. What does that do to a top attacker when you see the serves constantly going to her? Well, you know, it, it, they're trying to get her out of the offense. So even though she's back court, they want to serve her so that she can't get the back row attack. So putting a lot of pressure on the key left side hitter is nothing new. Uh, you know, if you are going to be a key offensive threat, then you better be ready to take on the responsibility of passing the first contact. Teams are going to pick on you. You just have to be mentally tough. in for Northwestern. Marchek was there, Kanbe cross court, and the up from Kramer. Monica McGreal not able to keep her footing and loses that ball. Yeah, the left side attacker for Purdue, though, you got to swing away, roll shot, tip ball, free balls. I want to see swingers out there. So it, the ball is not set perfectly, I understand that, but rebarchek has got to get her feet to the ball and hammer it. That is her job as a left side hitter. This out of the back row has to stop and adjust. And Val Nickel on the left side terminates. You know, I think she has got a great arm swing. I think she's got a good approach. Val Nickel just needs the confidence to go up every time and hit that way. 
she can get a lot of points on that left side pin for her team. Purdue desperately needs her to bring that hammer out right now. It's the first kill of the evening for Val Nickel. Leads his Boilermaker team in kills and assists. Far too much from a Conde that time. Dangerous area for <laughs> Northwestern as Purdue's opened up the four point lead. Yeah, and, and she says, my fault, my fault. That was clearly a bad hit, miss hit, float ball, out of bounds, way wide. Not a good first contact for Northwestern. Off the block and out of play for Rabarczyk. So the more we see these balls out of system, we see a non-setter touching the ball. And the ball has got to be set perfectly so the pin hitter can do something with it. I like the way Purdue's non-setter steps in and delivers good sets. 6-1 run for the Boilermakers. Davis with the set to Nickel. And there'll be a whistle, the point awarded to Northwestern. Did Davis. not go over the net. Yeah, Davis's ball clearly under set. Val Nickel could not do anything with it. When you're given a bad set like that, again, you can't make an error. It, it, it's unex There's no reason to do that. You've got to get your feet to the ball. you got to do something positive, because clearly now momentum has shifted Northwestern's way. A lot of momentum when you have an overpass like that. Mm -hmm. It is very easy for any player when the ball's just sitting there above the net. Oh, those ones are so much fun. You just <laughs> go up and hammer them. I used to love them. Go on that right side. Dutchman keeps it away from Rabarczyk. Akanbe can't handle that ball, frustrated again. Akanbe yeah, is not known as being a great ball handler, although this ball gets touched off the block, so she should have been able to do something with it. Let's see her frustration there with that contact. Numbers on the hit percentages. Northwestern not a whole lot better. They hit negative though in the first set. So that has improved. And Dutchman just in front of a diving Carly Kramer. Well, as Dutchman goes, so will this Northwestern team. She's getting some big swings. Take a look at this powerful attack. Poorly set up block by Purdue. She ran, Dutchman ran right past the left side blocker for Purdue. Another overpass, and Boltis does not put it down. And in the end, it's a kill for Rabarczyk. Rabarczyk just an off-speed shot. It should have been a transition play for Northwestern. Take a look, she's way off the net. Just roll shots it down. It's not the most difficult hit to dig, so Northwestern clearly has to uh, be a little bit more disciplined on down balls. Ten kills now for Katherine Rabarczyk. A chance for Dutchman, and she connects. Well, Dutchman has been unstoppable on that side, so Purdue needs to make an adjustment when blocking her. Take her cross-court shot away and see if she can hit line. She's been hitting a lot of cross-court. We'll see if there's any adjustment in that Purdue left side block. Nickel just able to get an arm on that ball and keep it out of the net. Set comes from Kramer to Drews. Too much there and out of play, and Go back to talking about Katie Dutchman. Not only is the move to get her on the right side of the net, so there are more chances for her, but if she can get going, that opens things up for Stephanie Holtis a lot more on the left side. Oh, for sure. You want that balanced pin-to-pin -pin attack, and she's actually doing a really good job of, of beating the block. This time it's Katie Griffin, who is that spark off the bench for the Boilermakers. Had four of her six kills last night in the third set, and Dave Shondell said she made a big difference. Yeah, Katie Griffin does exactly what she needs to do. She comes in off the bench and provides a spark for her team, and that is a huge role for any player to have. Right now, it's all Dutchman is the spark in this match for Northwestern. Purdue doesn't have the answer, but fortunate as she rotates out. Yeah, she's in the backcourt now, so Purdue's defense can regroup, focus on some new players, but when she rotates back up to the front row, they need to figure out a way to stop her, because she's going to come back in here in three rotations and she's going to be ready to score some more points. Monica McGreal comes in for Dutchman in the back row. this into the block. 
Kiki Jones with another. Well, Kiki Jones with a very aggressive swing, and that's what we're not seeing from the pin hitters. So you can see Shondell's frustration. He likes his middle attackers. He thinks they go up really big and wishes that the pin hitters would do the same with every ball that they get. So Kiki Jones providing a nice little spark here for, for her team. Numbers on Kiki Jones. Katie Griffin again, the ball, not a great pass, but she's able to go off the block. Hey, if you can chip away at that block and score points, that's a good thing. So Katie Griffin getting her another kill for her team. Just path in from Ryan. That time, though, Griffin not over the net. Yeah, that's a poor hitting error. Let's talk a little bit about Northwestern setter on that play. Again, she's moving to the left front area of the court, sets behind Holtis's front row, so everybody was predicting it was going to go to Holtis. So nice ball movement by Northwestern setter. Just on the dump over by Kaylee Ryan. Nickel with a good swing. Pancake coming from Nita's ball. Ball opportunity. Kiki Jones can't get it to go. Happen with the chance, and somehow Val Nickel keeps it off the floor. And Paffin in the end off Kramer. <laughs> That's nice play there by Northwestern to just hang in there. Good defensive moves. Look at that pancake. And then a little free ball over the net. Opportunity to swing for the point. But this is where it ends. Oh, no, it doesn't. Free ball over the net. And this is where it ends right here. Nice shot. Lula Chan said they hoped they would get Savannah Paffin going as the Big Ten season went on. Five kills for her tonight. And she's been effective for this Northwestern team. But those service errors continue to pile up. Yeah, and you know, after a long rally like that and your team is up and you competed hard, you want to go back and put some pressure on Purdue. So, poor service error. Boilermakers on top in the third set, 15 to 12. Boilermakers up 15 to 12 in their home gym. The boiler box is rocking and Catherine Rabarczyk in the third set coming through four kills already. Yeah, and you know what? She doesn't always get the perfect set, so she's got to clean up whatever set she gets. Take a look at this one. The ball's at the 10-foot line. She does something with it. Again, it's at about 11 feet. She rolls shots deep to the corner. So as an outside hitter, that's what you want to do. You want to take any set that you get and make kills. Good numbers for her so far tonight. 10 kills at 360 and one dig so far for Rabarczyk. Mentioned that she had... 11 kills and six blocks last November against the Wildcats. Good to see her playing at this high level considering that abdominal strain that kept her out for seven matches earlier this year. Back to Paffin, go to Wildcats. Venus ball with another up off Jones's attempt. And Kanbe goes off the hands. Kanbe, yes, her team is jacked up that she's playing well. She takes big swings on the ball, heavy arm. Reduce back court. You want to play a little bit more perimeter on her. She's wiping it off the block. So the middle back player. If they're deeper. They might be able to get a hand on it. Six kills for a convict. Down the line where Barczyk taking advantage of the hands this time. So now if you're Catherine Barczyk, you've got to be thinking about what you're going to do on the block. How are you going to block that right side attack from Northwestern? The blocking down for the Wildcats as they remain within two in the third set. Well, in this rotation, Holtis's back court, Northwestern's front court isn't as dominant as what it would be setting this number one All-American, so the ball goes in her hands. Lily Ryan serving for Northwestern. Met at the net and the point, no, it will go to Northwestern. When the ref puts both hands up, it's a back row block. So as Northwestern was attacking the ball, you're going to see one hand from Davis touching it. She tries to cheer like, hey, I didn't do anything wrong. She knows she's backcourt player, cannot block the ball. 
Slater who sets on the right side to Dutchman. It's out of play, so Purdue up 17-15. Dutchman in the middle puts it away. And that's her middle experience showing right there. She takes a ball that's just hanging high in the middle of the net, and she goes up aggressively, pounds it down. 15 kills now for Katie Dutchman. One off a season high for her. That's it from Rabarczyk. Nita's ball with the bump set to Holtis, and she gets the kill off the touch. And Purdue had an opportunity to swing for the kill, and again, a poorly set ball to the outside. Leaves Rubarczyk with no options but to tip the ball over. You don't want to give free balls to any team. Timeout tied at 17 in the third set. Boilermakers and the Wildcats battling in a tight one in West Lafayette. Coming into tonight, 10 of 30 Big Ten matches have gone five sets. And Northwestern, a 5-2 run to tie up the third set here. Another service error. Well, the service errors are just killing Northwestern. I know Kilor Chen has got to be upset about that, especially when you are neck and neck and you're on the road against a ranked opponent. You want to play close to flawlessly. Eight service errors now for the Wildcats. Back to Dutchman, and again into the floor. Yeah, they haven't even found a way to slow down the ball. The block is getting absolutely no touch on this one. Nice set there by Ryan, and the ball is going over top of Rabarczyk. Griffin into the block, back on Purdue's side. Does not go over the net. Fayetta Lawjaw did not read that ball well. No, and you know, we talked about how Shondell prides himself on his team's ball control. Right now, the ball control is falling apart for Purdue. They go back to Anna Lawjaw and she gets the kill. Well, I'm not sure why you would set anybody else. <laughs> Adelaja and Jones in the middle have been outstanding. So there you see a classic one ball setter jumps. Middle hitter's ready, and it scores for Purdue. And Lawjaw, the redshirt freshman, out of Baton Rouge. Back to Dutchman. Kramer tracks us down, falls hard to the floor. That will not head over for Purdue. And Northwestern, five points from taking the third. Well, Northwestern very aggressive, even though they tipped that last ball. They're tipping with a purpose. Holtis is out there calling for sets. So a different Northwestern team for sure than we saw in that first set. So the attack airs in that first set for Northwestern, 11. They've had three in this third set, though. So they've cut down on that number as the match has gone on. And he drews. Ryan to Paffin. Block there, and Katie Griffin. Kiki Jones terminates for the Boilermakers. Yeah, when Purdue needs a kill, they go to their middles. Kiki Jones doing a really good job on transition. Nice scrappy play here. Northwestern sends the free ball over. Take a look at Kiki Jones. Big time speed. Fourth match of the season in double figures and kills for Kiki Jones. 625 on the match she's hitting. Kramer can't dig that ball out in the kill for Holtis. Holtis is coming on, so when you get Holtis and Dutchman both playing well, this is what Purdue looks like. If they can eliminate some of those service errors, they might be able to capture this third set. Northwestern and Stephanie Holtis trying to take a 2-1 to one lead, the third team All-American a year ago back to serve. Good coverage by Akanbe, but the pass isn't there. And McGreal out of the back row, too strong. 
Yeah, again, it's a broken play. The setter was running off the court, bump sets it behind. Just keep the ball in play. You know, you've done a good job of slowing down the ball with your block. So if you're Northwestern, just don't inflict an error. Do not give an easy point to Purdue. Tied at 21. It'll be another timeout. And these coaches, they know how tight this match can be and how this one could go to five sets like we've seen so much throughout the Big Ten. As we take a look around the Big Ten Conference and some of the scores from around the Big Ten, three of five matches last night went to five sets and currently a number in progress. First set win for Michigan State against Nebraska. Huge match, both those teams at 5-0 in Big Ten play coming into tonight. So the Spartans at home on top of Nebraska and Minnesota taking it to Ohio State in the first set. Yeah, and we talk about road wins. Nebraska at Michigan State, so winning on the road is crucial. Tough test for Nebraska. We'll see how that one ends up. We'll see the Wolverines at the end of the first set. They beat the Hawkeyes in the first. So early action around the rest of the conference. And we talk about the Nebraska-Michigan State match. Those two teams unbeaten. So that will come to a close. One team will be atop those standings at the end of tonight. Wouldn't be surprised to see it be the Michigan State Spartans. They are the only team to not be playing in five sets in the Big Ten Conference so far this year. Well, Michigan State is a great team, and I'm telling you what, it's exciting to see a team that's been in the middle of the pack in the conference in the years past come up and take a huge jump. So hats off to Michigan State. They are playing some good volleyball this season. Northwestern and Purdue about to close out this third set. Second set went to Northwestern, 25-23, so they closed out a tight second set. We'll see if they can close out a tight third. And I really believe it's the team that's mentally tough at this point. It's a game to four points, so you have to play aggressively from all aspects of the game, from the service line to your outside hitters, middle hitters. Everybody just has to go for it. Game to four points. A good first contact by Northwestern, so free ball chance for Purdue. Davis goes to Rabarchek. Nickel just rolls it over the block, and it's McGreal diving for the ball. Ball out of play in the kill for a convent. Well, Nickel had the opportunity to score a high roll shot. It wasn't even a good roll shot. It was like a free ball. So Northwestern takes control of that ball and ends up getting a transition, attack, and a point. So that dive from Monica McGreal to keep that ball alive, and in the end it results in a kill for Yuanda Akanbe, her seventh, and you kind of talk about her being the closer. This is the time in the third set. Yeah, this is when Northwestern needs her the most. Davis to Kiki Jones. Ball stays in play. Rabarczyk with a big swing, but you saw the antenna move. And Keeler Chan out on the floor cheering his team on. Yeah, he is excited. He is sees this third set as a possibility of them winning it. And so he's up and he is excited, cheering on his team. This Northwestern team has not been great on the road in the Big Ten. Let's take a look at this last chance for Rabarczyk. Yeah, you can see that antenna moving. Rachel Davis get running all over the court to track down these balls. So even though it was a defensive play, you really want to keep the setter as close to the setting box, which is in that right front, middle front area of the court. She had to bump set it, perhaps a little bit too tight on the set. And again, we clearly saw that antenna moving when the ball was attacked. We talked about how difficult it can be on the road in the Big Ten Conference. Northwestern is just three for 27 against ranked Big Ten opponents on the road since 2008. Excuse me, two for 27. So they have the chance here against Purdue. Wednesday night on BTN, Northwestern hosts the Big Ten Kills and Points leader, Caitlin Leary and Ohio State in a volleyball clash. Coverage starts at 7.30 Eastern on BTN and BTN to go. Wildcats would love to be heading into Wednesday night on a two-match winning streak. Oh, for sure. Killer Chan would be so happy with his team. So this set is important. There you see the leader. You saw the leader, Stephanie Holtis, for Northwestern. She's been incredible, but Dutchman as well. Very solid for Northwestern. Conference so deep as the Big Ten is. Makes it difficult on the road, and what a 
huge point of the match this is for Northwestern if they can pull off this third set and go up 2-1. Davis one-handed to Jones, and the Wildcats can't get to the ball. Boy, that really should have been a Northwestern point. The serve was tough, put a lot of pressure on the pass, but a nice save there by Davis to keep the ball in play. Again, that should have been a Northwestern point. That ball should have been dug, and they should have transitioned and scored on that ball. It'll be Kiki Jones to serve with Purdue down by one. Conbay off the hands. Foul nickel on the left side gets the ball to fall. Conbay hitting a predictable angle, easily dug by Purdue's backcourt. And then Nickel with a swing. And Shondell would like to see her swinging hard, calling for sets. He has a lot of confidence in her as an outside hitter. Tied at 23. Can one of these teams string together two? Or are we going to extra points in the third? Ryan back to a con bay. Jones can't dig it up. And Northwestern is so excited. Akambe swinging big. Nice set all the way to the pin. And Akambe just goes for it. I don't think she's got a lot of shots necessarily. I think she just tries to hammer through the block. Set point for Northwestern. Val Nickel gets the corner. serious look on her face. <laughs> We'd like to see her a little bit more animated. She just scored a point for her team, but you have to win by two here, so Purdue's got control of the serve. Shondell says that she is much more of a competitor than in years past. Back to Akande, puts it down, another set point. Upcoming for the Wildcats. Keeler champ, <laughs> loosening his tie. This is intense. Purdue played a deuce set last night against Illinois. And Illini won 31 to 29. And Northwestern close it out here with their second set point. Davis over on two and it's down. A nice heads up play there by Davis. She sees a perfect pass coming her way. Middle blocker for Northwestern was flat footed. She takes advantage of that typically does not play front row, but here we're seeing her in the front. Mitchell Davis, the redshirt senior out of Kalamazoo, Michigan. And it's Dutchman for Northwestern. Ryan goes back to her, the solo stuff for Faye Adelajo. Oh, what a great move by Shondell to move Faye Adelajo to the left side to block. Take a look at this. They switch their middle to the Left side area of the court, she seals it perfectly. Nice coaching move by Shondell. Necessitated after all the success that Katie Dutchman has had throughout this match, and the move by Shondell gives his team their first set point in the third. Fayetta Lawjaw leads this team in blocks as a redshirt freshman, and she gets another here in the third set at a crucial moment. This Purdue team does not want to have this match go to five sets. They want to win the third, play in the fourth. If they fell here in the third, the only chance for them to win would be to come back in five. That's right. And, you know, Dave Shondell, a, a strategic move, a gutsy move to switch your middle to the left side. You know, sometimes those moves pay off, and sometimes they don't. But clearly, this time, it did pay off. So we're going to keep track of his front row to see if he makes that adjustment again. And Dave Shondell has said in the past that he's a coach who usually just sticks to the lineup uh -huh. that he has. He doesn't make that move. He's been hesitant in the past. Here he makes the correct move and it pays off. Right. Sometimes we get stubborn as coaches and you think, <laughs> uh, it's got to work this time. It's got to work this time. So, you know, just having the courage to make that move. And, and sometimes you get burned. Uh, but that's, this time, that strategic blocking switch for Purdue paid off. Keeler Chan hoping this third set doesn't slip away as Northwestern has had their opportunities to close it out. Now Purdue with their first chance, 26-25 in the third, Rabarczyk to serve. This block is moving. Holtis gets one back for the Wildcats. We're tied again. All right, and that's, that's what happens sometimes when you switch 
and then you've got your middle trying, a new middle blocker trying to block. Well, they're out of sorts. So it uh, didn't pay off for Purdue that time. They were anticipating a back set. Davis down Alonjo and not dug up by Nita Spall. Another set point upcoming for Purdue. Well, Adelaja with a key swing there. That's huge. Getting that point is big time. Harley Kramer attempting to serve out the third at this last point for Purdue. Back to Dutchman, tools the block. Now Dutchman's making this set interesting. She's going to go back to the back court, but take a look at her swing. Again, a great set by Ryan, feeding Dutchman, putting it in the right spot. Now that she rotates to the back court, Purdue's block has got to understand where the key hitters are. 14th tie of the set. Dutchman staying in. Grill knocks of it in for Northwestern, and Holtis gives Northwestern another chance. You know, this is a great test for both teams. Neither one wants to die, so you got to string a couple positive points together. Northwestern got the first positive point. Can they come back and do something positive with the ball and win this set? And the ball doesn't go over, and Northwestern takes the third on a 2-1 lead. It's Dutchman from the service line coming through. Well, great fight from both teams, but Northwestern really coming alive. Again, their hitters doing a much better job of swinging big. It's not a look on Katie Dutchman's face. Just a little surprised that she got the point as well. And Northwestern wins the third, 29-27. Dutchman not serving as much this year. But it works out in the third set. It's the Wildcats up 2-1 to one on the road against Purdue. <laughs> Northwestern looking for their second consecutive victory on the road. They beat Indiana last night in five, and they're up two to one on Purdue. A 29 to 27 win in the third set, and really the catalyst, Katie Dutchman for the Wildcats. Yeah, she's been outstanding, and hats off to Kaylee Ryan, who's been able to give her great sets. But there you see how she's just pounding the ball, and with range. We see some cross court, some line shot there, taking care of an overpass. So clearly, Katie Dutchman is here to play tonight. Katie Dutchman tying a career high with 17 kills, hitting 263. You see the Wildcats' numbers improve over the course of this match. Hit negative in the first set, hit 234 in the second, and 333 in the third. Yeah, that's a huge improvement. And so the Wildcats are getting better as the match goes on. They keep pushing a little bit harder offensively, looking so much better in that third set than they did in the first. Well, and if you're Purdue, you've seen Katie Dutchman. They tried to move her over Faye Adelaja. She got one big block on that left side, the right side of the net for Northwestern. What else do you need to do if you're Purdue to slow her down? Well, I think you just have to line up better against her. It seems like she's getting clear shots, so that left side blocker needs to just move her feet before she jumps to, to block the ball and maybe get some good touches. You don't have to stuff block necessarily. You just got to slow that ball down. Well, Purdue with the early point from Adelaja on the fourth set, up 1-0. The Boilers will see how they respond in the fourth to the 2-1 deficit. Do must send this to five if they want to win. Holtis is long, did not catch the line. Boy, that ball was close to the line. Those are the shots that will score for her. Take a look at this nice jump set all the way outside. Boy, she takes big swings. Ah, that's a close one there. And Dutchman moving from the right back into the middle, so Northwestern getting her all over the floor again. Okay, yeah, you can see the confidence that Northwestern has. They're passing better. Look at Dutchman's feet to get her body around to get herself in front of the setter. Again, a former middle hitter. She knows how to hit those one balls. There's Jones on the other side for Purdue. Middle versus middle right now. Kiki Jones, anything she gets seems to score. She does a really good job of pulling away from the setter, hitting those 31s. 
Uh, I just, I like her feet and I like her distance from the net so she can swing all the way through on her arm swing. And Dutchman on the right, the whistle though, and I believe the antenna was touched. That ball hit out of bounds. We talked about Kaylee Ryan though, the freshman out of Glen Ellen, Illinois for this Northwestern team. A former walk-on, earned a scholarship from her play so far this year, and really a bright future for her from the play we've seen so far. Yep, she was the Big Ten setter and freshman of the week earlier uh, in the season, so she's done a really good job for her team. That time to serve from Purdue, real tough. Northwestern could not handle it. Gives the Boilermakers a 5-1 lead in the fourth. Ryan to Holtis. And the whistle going to be called against Northwestern. I believe that Savannah Paffin might have been in the net. Yeah, I think you're right. Davis serving for Purdue. Dutchman at the 10 foot line and still gets the floor. <laughs> She's got so much range. And sometimes you just have those magical nights where you are on and it seems like she's having that kind of a night because this isn't the best set in the world. She's at the 10 foot line, but she hits high. She hits corner with a lot of top spin. Again, her setter, Kaylee Ryan, is finding her. She knows she's having a hot night. Career night so far for Katie Dushman with the 18 kills. Rabarczyk firing back for Purdue. Rabarczyk hitting a two ball in the middle. A varied attack from Purdue. She's had a little chit chat with her coach there. Dave Shondell said that they expected her to blow up this season, but then the injury, the abdominal strain sidelined her. She did have 20 kills against Notre Dame earlier this year, and she's had a fantastic night tonight. They need her to continue to keep it up in the fourth. Overpass created. Good chance here for Northwestern. A give and go to Paffin. Vanessa back in for Purdue. Holt his big swing and kill. <laughs> yeah, she's saying, yeah, come on. She can feel this one. Sets her right there on the money. And boy, she hits that seam, high seam. That's a great shot. Out of play in the service airs, continuing for Northwestern. Yeah, Holtis has had her share of service errors. She's got so much adrenaline after she gets her kill. You know, sometimes players can step farther back from the end line and really let the ball go, put some pop on it, especially if that ball's been going long a few times. So well beyond the 10 foot line and puts it into the net. Yeah, she's just not having the same type of night that we've seen her have. You know, those 16 kills against a very strong Penn State team. We're just not seeing those numbers from her. She's trying to work her way out of it, but struggling a little tonight. So those 16 kills against Penn State. She had 14 last night, but miscommunication there. Rachel Davis and Val Nickel running into each other, the two setters. And when plays like that happen, you know that it's just not your night. So you've got to win despite not having a great night. You've got to figure out a way to compete and win. You don't have to play perfectly to win this match. Set to Epinesa, but out of play. The Northwestern back to within two. You know, it's so interesting. The Wildcats had so many unforced errors in that first set. Now it's Purdue. All kinds of errors happening right now. Not a good decision by Amanda Neal. A mental error right there. That's right, and she's one of the key passers. So Shondell can clearly see, you know, things are not going well. Very necessary for him to call a timeout and have his team regroup a little bit. That ball well within the line as Purdue let it go in the ace for Northwestern, the 8-7 lead for the Boilermakers. But Northwestern is rallying in the fourth set. They lead the match 2-1. to one. But Northwestern climbing back in it down by one. Kaylee Ryan setting a great match for this Northwestern team. The freshman out of Glen Ellen, Illinois, and a former walk-on. 
You know, nice job. 46 assists for her in seven digs. Right, and for the hitting percentage to improve in every set, getting stronger, is a real testimony to what she's able to do out there. So good job by Kaylee Ryan. Overpass created, and Slater takes advantage, tied at eight. Talk about so many freshmen on the floor for this Northwestern team. Four true fresh freshmen have played this year, including Maddie Slater, Kaylee Ryan, and Kayla Maureen. And the Boilermakers go to Nickel for an answer. So Northwestern was really working Purdue on the serve. That time, Purdue got a decent pass, put the ball in Nickel's hands, and she delivers on that right side. chance to serve for Purdue. Dave Shondell talked about offensive execution coming into this match and in this fourth set and even towards the end of the third, Purdue has not had that execution that he's been looking for. Right, and I think the frustrating thing is, is as a coach, when you see the potential in players, you see that they have the ability to score points and they're just not doing it. I think that's one of the most frustrating things as a coach when you can just see that they just need something, some motivation to get going. You can see Shondell's very frustrated at this point. It is tied at nine in the fourth, but it feels like all the momentum is on Northwestern's side after coming back from being down in the start. And Vanessa, though, with a good swing, and that's what Purdue needs considering she's had a slow start to this match. Well, a bump set clear across the court, so she took a high ball and she did something positive with it. Take a look at Nichols delivering that set, and there she goes up swinging really well like you said we need to see a little bit more from her in order for um, Purdue to hit a better offense hit better offensive numbers Lawjaw takes advantage of the opening any ball that's trickling at the net she will aggressively go after take a look at this pass that goes clear up to the net setter was not there so she just took control of it and scored I float over from Hillary Fox. Conbe again. Pulled up for Purdue. Another chance for a Conbe and off the block and out of play. On the left side for Purdue, Rabarczyk was not given a great set. She tipped the ball over. Really had no option with that ball. So Northwestern takes an easy ball, transitions, and there's that 79 key hitter. For Northwestern. 11 kills for Yuande Akanbe. Exactly what Keeler Chan expects from his closer. There is Catherine Rabarchek for Purdue. Okay, Purdue passing well, moving Rabarchek inside the court. It's not all the way out to the pin, so a different look again for the blocking team for Northwestern. I think it's important to vary your attack. Kramer, who sets over to Annie Drews. Three ball coming over. One run for Val Nickel. Extended rally here, and Rubarczyk tips it over. Nudis ball with the bump set to Dutchman. And Rubarczyk finally ends it, connecting in the back row. Well, Rabarczyk with that high roll shot, boy, that's making my head spin, but she makes up for it with big kills. So take a look at this bump set that she gets. And this is the arm swing that I like to see from Rabarczyk. She goes over top of that shorter block for Northwestern. She's hitting over top of Dutchman. 14 kill night for Katherine Rabarczyk. She was second on the team in kills last year behind Ariel Turner. It's her fourth match of the season in double figures, and she's done well against Northwestern over the past few years. The 13-10 lead for Purdue in the fourth set. Well, the makers seem to have found their rhythm a little bit more than they had in the third, and earlier in the set when Northwestern put together a run. And this Purdue team wants to send it to five, not only because they want to keep the match alive, but they have won 16 of their last 19 five-set matches. That's right, but you know, we talk about some of the errors that they've had here in this fourth set. Um, really strange errors, and Shondell quickly called a timeout. I think there were three bad unforced errors on their side of the net. 
you see the numbers. 10 of 30 Big Ten matches have gone to five sets and 35 of 165 total on the year. Doesn't sound like a ton in the overall, but in conference alone, that number is unheard of in recent years in Big Ten Conference Volleyball. Right. Every night you're kind of waiting to see what's going to happen. And it doesn't matter where you are in the standings. You can stretch and extend a team to five sets, and that's what makes the conference so exciting. Coaches in the Big Ten have said it's so difficult to predict anything in the conference this year. This being probably the toughest the Big Ten has been in the history of women's volleyball. Of those eight teams in the top 25. Purdue, one of them, Dutchman off the block. And the Wildcats trying to take down a ranked team. Keep talking about Kaylee Ryan, just a freshman setting a very standard offense, but smart. She's putting the ball in her key hitter's hands. Barczyk goes to her key hitter, and a net violation called against Northwestern. Well, if you're Northwestern, this is a good test because you're down a few points. You want to see if you can serve and pass better than Purdue at this point. So the pass here is going to be key. Can you get the 12th point? Dutchman, ball comes right back over. Halfman and terminates for Northwestern. Whenever you get your middles involved like that, you're feeling some confidence. Kaylee Ryan getting the mojo going. You can see that Purdue's block is flat-footed, not expecting her to get the ball. back in to serve for the Wildcats. And Purdue can almost breathe a sigh of relief without Dutchman on the floor. Receiving that ball with Barczyk off the block. This has been quiet in the fourth. Marine out of the back row. Block is there for Northwestern. Did that actually go over the net? It's four touches on Purdue. Well, either way, they're getting in Val Nichols' head a little bit. They're making sure that she has to score a good shot against a well-set-up block. So she's on the left side right now. And after the conclusion of this match, the final drive here on BTN. And that to you once this match is done inside the boiler box. Here's Holtis. Good job in the back row. Fox to get to it. Kramer sends it over. But the effort in the end doesn't pay off as Pappen puts it away. Pappen's having a nice match. Purdue really getting outworked serve receive. They're not passing very well right now. Northwestern really jacking up their serves. We saw a great play by Carly Kramer, the libero for Purdue. But right now, Northwestern. Boy, they got it going on. Paffin swinging well for her team. Seven kills for Savannah Paffin. Not hitting for a high number, but off those nine kills from last night. Peter Chan needed it. Talked about a number of different players for the Wildcats. Holtis, Dutchman, Paffin. They needed that balance. And they go back to Holtis, and the Wildcats have the lead. Now you talk about good first contact for Northwestern. The backcourt defense just getting hands up to keep that ball in play. And that's what you need. Aggressive plays from everybody, but that first contact is so important. Rock is there, ready for Kiki Jones. Kramer again gets it in play. Will Northwestern finish it? Holtis does not touch anything in the point to Purdue. This is great volleyball we're seeing here. You know, in terms of aggressive swings, people going after it. Sloppy play from Purdue, but they managed to get the point because of a hitting error from Northwestern. Tell the temperature is rising yes. in the building. Keeler Chan wiping off his face throughout. The players constantly calling for the floor to be wiped off. As the heat rises. Purdue able to get that to fall in front of Vita Spall. That was Val Nickel with the roll shot from the right side. Look at her transition. She gets off the net quickly. 
She shows the roll shot. Her elbow had dropped prior to. She wasn't like she was cocked back with that arm, hand back to the ear, so she didn't disguise it. But Northwestern's defense could not track it down. Ryan has to go one hand. Holtis goes for the corner. Neal keeps it in play. Nickel, another chance. Holtis into the block and down. Holt is so aggressive on her swings every time she goes up. That all-American arm of hers, she goes up to swing and win every time. Now she's in the backcourt. Doesn't limit her set potential there. They will give her the ball in the backcourt if she's able. Handed up by McGreal, and there is Holt. is out of the backcourt into the net. Goes up aggressively, just missed that one. It wasn't a block for Purdue, just a miss hit by Stephanie Holtis. Purdue won the first set 25 13. The second went to Northwestern 25 23. And then in a due set in the third, it was 29 27. Northwestern winning and going up 2 1. Currently, Purdue up by one in the fourth. Conbay back in, cross court, out of play. Conway does have the tendency to be high air. She gets yep. her numbers, but at times they cannot afford those airs. Yeah, when she's good, she's good, and when she's bad, she's bad. So we'll see when Keelor Chan decides to sub her out and put in a new left side. And just taps it over, knew she couldn't set that ball. Nickel on the tip. And that will not go over. It's out of play on Northwestern and Purdue. Six points away from sending it to another fifth set in the Big Ten Conference. Kilo Chan calls a timeout to regroup. 19-16 lead for Purdue on top of Northwestern. Boilers trying to close out the fourth and send it to five when we return. Wisconsin will also be in action this weekend. Purdue, though, trying to close out the fourth and send another Big Ten match to five sets. Well, this tips from the back row. Hawk is there for the Wildcats, but great job by Amanda Neal to get the ball up. Boilermakers continue to run into each other, and it does not phase them as the point still goes to Purdue. Well, a combi gets in the way of uh, Nita Spall, the, the libero, and there was some confusion there and so that should have been an easy transition dig for Northwestern. It was basically a free ball, so a little confusion there on Northwestern side. Six to one run by Purdue. Back to Pathen for the Wildcats. Pathen's making this interesting by getting that point. You know, Northwestern, you have to give them credit. You know, they played horribly in that first set, and then we haven't seen any sign of that team again. They kept competing and playing hard, putting that first set, you know, forgetting about it, putting it behind them, and playing good volleyball. You know, Chan loved the resolve of his team last night to beat Indiana in five. Nice to see him end it here in four. I have to send this over. And again, Boilermakers running into each other. Real too much and out of play. So it does not hurt Purdue in the end. But just not the communication you like to see from your players. Right, there's lots of confusion, lots of people bumping into each other. So you're gonna have those kinds of nights where you're just not playing very crisp, clean volleyball. So what? You gotta win the set, you gotta win the match. So when things aren't going well, just try and communicate, work hard, and try and work your way out of it. Win means even that much more when you can win on an off night. Purdue up 21-17. Have gotten some help, help here in the fourth. We talked about the airs not being as prevalent as they were in the first set for Northwestern. The Wildcats with six airs in the fourth, hitting under 200. Nickel to serve for Purdue. Not a good first touch. Ball. 
Purdue can't get to it. Carly Kramer has been involved in a lot of these collisions for the Boilermakers. Well, she's aggressive. It's her job to try and play that ball. She just is, look at the confusion on Northwestern's side. But this free ball, the ball should be passed better. It should be passed to the back row so that Kramer can set the offense. So really the first contact wasn't the best. Back on the Purdue's side of the net. Neal with the bump set to Epinesa. Good swing, and she gets the touch. All right, Purdue fans want her to start getting start get rolling here on the outside. She has been very quiet. You see her rotating to the back court. Purdue three points from sending it to set number five. And Audrey, we've talked about how many teams in the Big Ten have gone to five sets, a long four-set match last night for Purdue. Does this drain these players? Maybe one of the reasons why we've seen some sloppy play out here? <laughs> well, you know what, I, I think uh, I think the sloppy play has to do with your mental uh, preparation, um, where you are mentally in, in the match. I'm not sure that you can directly uh, relate playing a five-setter the night before to sloppy play. Uh, so right now what I'm seeing is, is just players playing with weak minds, and uh, they really need to start jacking it up, because this could be anybody's match. Any, either team here could, could win this match, and uh, it's really going to be the one that's mentally tough and can work their way through playing. Again, not so clean volleyball tonight. Holtis is trying to make sure that is the Northwestern Wildcats who come away with the win. They're down by two now again in the fourth. Look at the ball set. Annie Drews just had to tip it. Vanessa has to adjust, excuse me, Rabarczyk. Adjusting gets it over. The swing from Holtis, but the stuff for Annie Drews. Well, Annie Drews gets the point and really saves her team with that stuff block because offensively it just wasn't there for Purdue. You see how she reaches over. That's a huge block for Holtis to hit around. Annie Drews at six foot four for Purdue. Go back to Dutchman, and it is set point for the Boilermakers. Dutchman talking to her team with a lot of confidence. My, my bad. And I would imagine somebody like her would want the ball again. Let's go back to her. The block out of play, so Northwestern with the point and still in the fourth. That's a real courageous swing by Katie Dutchman. She made an error prior to that one. And so to call for the set and be able to deliver for your team says a lot about the type of player that Katie Dutchman is. Service error ends the fourth though in Northwestern. Not able to get it done from the line and we go to the fifth set. Another five set match in the Big Ten. Make it now number 11 in the Big Ten Conference play this season. It's incredible, incredible stat. Northwestern won the second and third set, but Purdue in the fourth. We're going to five in West Lafayette. Here in the boiler box as Purdue takes the fourth set 25-21 over Northwestern, and we will play a race to 15 between these two teams. The Big Ten Conference has been all about the five set matches so far in Big Ten play. Make this number 11 now in the Big Ten Conference of five setters. And both of these teams have played five setters in the past week. Northwestern winning last night against Indiana. Purdue falling to Penn State at home. Northwestern three and one on the year in five set matches and Purdue two and two. Yeah, Northwestern coming in with all kinds of confidence, knowing that they can beat an opponent on the road. As you mentioned, Mike, they did it last night. At this point, both teams just need to control what they can control. And in the fifth set, that means effort, attitude, and compete hard. They have to have that competitive maturity. Now, this is anybody's match. And so the team that comes out strong, that eliminates those unforced errors, plays with confidence and poise will be the one that wins this fifth, fifth set. And that was Northwestern last night. They had just one air in the fifth set against Indiana. Purdue, on the other hand, when they played Penn State, they got out to a bad start. Sean Dell said his team just could not come back. 
We'll see how this one goes at the beginning, but usually the team that gets off to a fast start in the fifth comes away with a win. Yeah, we've seen that happen a lot. And so serving, whoever has the first serve will try to serve aggressively. We've seen Northwestern struggle a little bit from the service line, so they want to make sure that that aspect of their game is clean. And again, just compete hard. Everybody on the court has a job. Everybody needs to execute their little job, and things will go well. He has won 16 of their last 19 five-set matches, including 12 in a row at one point. Carly Kramer will start off the fifth inside the boiler box. Well, can't go to Dutchman, but it comes down on the Northwestern side. First point to Purdue. So Dutchman has been key all night. Purdue tracking her, doing a good job of getting in front of her approach and putting up a nice block against her. Thing you like about Dutchman though is she doesn't back down too easy. We've seen before where she's made an error and has called for the set. Not only has gotten the set but delivered a kill. Holt is for the Wildcats with the answer. Right, a good pass, but what they did is they brought Katie Dutchman around for the quick. So you got Katie Dutchman in the middle, holding the middle blocker just long enough for Purdue to open things up for Holtis. So again, I like Kaylee Ryan, and even though a freshman is setting a very smart offense. 20 kills now for Stephanie Holtis. She got it done last night, and Kiki Jones can't get it over for Purdue. The ball really didn't clear the net. The ball wasn't set high enough for her to extend and contact the contact the ball at the highest point possible. It's a reverse check. And somehow the Boilermakers keep it alive. He chose the overpass and kill for Dutchman. So Northwestern thought that that point was done. And somehow Purdue sends it over. you got to play the whistle. A look at this one ball. There you see. Scrappy play from Purdue. A good first pass out of system are the Boilermakers. But for Barczyk, it doesn't matter. That's key right there. Can you take a ball that is not perfect and do something with it? The person who set that second contact did a great job. The first contact was bad. We call that bettering the ball. Take a bad pass, make a great second contact, make a good set, and then terminate on that third contact. Was Carly Kramer with that assist to Catherine Rabarczyk, and she's done well with that throughout the evening. Davis serving for Purdue. Back to Dutchman for the Wildcats. Whistle will go against the Boilermakers on that double touch call. Yeah, when you dig the ball, you want to dig it high to the center of the court so that the setter is not racing into the net to set it. I think there was a um, net violation there or she was past the center line. But whatever it was, the setter made the violation on that second contact. This goes through the block, and at the net, the chance for Holtis. Now Nickel with the swing. Marine in the back row giving herself up. Now the attack for Marine out of the back row and the kill. Hey, we haven't seen that. Kayla Marine from the back court. Oh, she's getting some great defensive plays up, but take a look at this aggressive swing and swinging away from the blocker. Now that experience playing for Dead Frogs. That's a great club team that she played for. Lots of experience winning from that uh, club team, so. She's getting it done for her team. 5-2 lead for Northwestern. And the whistle as you get the point for Northwestern again on a mistake by Purdue. And Northwestern is on a roll. They're feeling it. Now here's the pressure for them. Keep going with this. Keep the accelerator going. And make Purdue make plays. Do not give them points on your air. See Dave Shondell not happy with the last call, and he'll call a timeout, a 6-2 lead for Northwestern in the fifth set. The Boilermakers, mentioned before, they fell behind against Penn State and could not recover in that fifth set as Northwestern 
leads it here in the fifth set, 6-2, to two, back in a moment. 6-2 lead in the fifth set for Northwestern on the road against Purdue. Monica McGreal dealing with the boiler block as she serves. Rabarczyk into the block of Northwestern. Jones with the tip. And the Wildcats can't run it down. Purdue getting lucky on that one. Kiki Jones, that's what athleticism will do. She just goes up and jousts at the net and tries to put the ball down wherever it is. So great athlete there, number 12, Kiki Jones. And Emil with an ace earlier, flips the net. Let's go back to Jones. Kramer just sends it over. I can't get a jump on it. Not a great assist attempt. Maureen out of the back row doesn't touch anything. Purdue within two. And Purdue's offense really struggling right now, but despite that, they end up getting the point. So Northwestern with a hitting error again. You just want to put the ball in play. Purdue's offense struggling right now. I believe they're hitting a negative number in this set. To get away with negative numbers in the fifth. Holtis off the high hands. Holtis just competing hard. You gotta love that when your All-American comes out and swings like this. High seam off Kiki Jones' hands. It's a key swing there by number one, Stephanie Holtis. See why Stephanie Holtis was named the National Player of the Week back on September 24th. Another big effort for her. The 20 kill effort for her, 21 on the night as she hits back to serve. Jones on the slide, Akanbe can't get the block. Well, Akanbe is not the best blocker against Kiki Jones. Kiki should win if the set is there. So she shows that if she's given the slide, Kiki Jones will deliver a kill for her team. Akanbe, Neil there with the dig. Ball on the other side with the uh, Holtis out of the back row. Half and behind the center for Northwestern. I like Pathan's aggressive nature. The setter for Northwestern, Kaylee Ryan, was off the net. She was about at eight feet. And that didn't stop Savannah Pathan from running her route, which was behind the setter. Take a look at it again. She goes behind her. It's a little bit slower, but nonetheless, Pathan finds herself one-on-one -on -one and gets a kill. Northwestern with the 8-5 to five lead in the fifth. As we mentioned before, the Wildcats have not had a lot of success on the road in the Big Ten against ranked teams. Since 2008, they're just 2-27. Two and 27. They're seven points away from getting their third win against a ranked Big Ten team on the road since that year of 2008. Overpass and the kill for the Wildcats. It's that serve pass game, and here in the fifth set, it's so important to clean up your serve receive. Number 16, Savannah Path, and goes for that aggressive, deep float serve. Worked out well for her. She'll have the ball again. Came into the night talking about how Northwestern wanted to find some balance so that Boltis wasn't the only focal point for the opponent's defense. Well, Keeler Chance team has four different players with at least 10 kills. They've come through and shown that they have other attack options other than the All-American. Right, and you know what? Walking in here, I don't know that Keeler Chan would have predicted that many players hitting so well. So they're having a good night. Purdue really having an off night. We see all kinds of confusion on their side of the net. So here's the test. They're down here in the fifth set, but they're on home court. Can they defend home court and win this set? Great match here in the fifth set between Northwestern and Purdue. So much more on BTDN, the Big Ten Digital Network, video.btn.com. You can check out more live women's volleyball. This Purdue team against Iowa. You see Northwestern and Penn State on October 20th as well. Video.btn.com for all 
volleyball around the Big Ten. But right now, Purdue is trying to hold on to home court. It was Keeler Chan who told us this week that what separates the middle of the pack teams from the top is winning on the road. The top teams usually win on the road. The middle of the pack teams also get a few wins. The bottom teams do not get the road victories. <laughs> right. So this right now telling you that Northwestern is not going to be in that bottom portion if they pull this out. That's right. And Keeler Chan said, you know, Purdue is dangerous at home. They're a big physical block. They're going to play exceptionally well. Well, he has seen that big physical block, but he hasn't really seen this Purdue team play exceptionally well. We've seen Purdue have moments of playing exceptionally well, but not consistently playing well. Overpass created, and Alonjo puts it down. And if you're Purdue, you've got, got to believe one point at a time. Just play each ball separately. Don't worry about the pass. Don't look in the rearview mirror. Just take this next ball and try and get the seventh point. You've got to talk one point at a time. Purdue has won the last five meetings with Northwestern. They trail it. Nickel will try to serve a run here for the Boilermakers. Holtis out of the back row, too strong. Boy, and getting that 10th point for Northwestern is really key, because once you get to 10, it's almost like this mental breakthrough. Hey, we've gotten double digits. So if Northwestern can get a good side-out swing here, they'll be feeling it tonight. So Akanbe for the side-out. Epinesa keeps it off the floor. Three ball chance, though, for Northwestern. Akanbe off the block. She's been solid, really doing a good job from the outside, taking big swings. They don't ask her to do much. Just get out there and hammer. And there you see that ball kissing the end line. A Vanessa off the block and out of play. Northwestern could not angle it in. Now that's a good, aggressive swing. See her coming from the outside into the court. Katie Dutchman yeah. trying to will that one in. That's right, it was close. Back to a convent. Back row again by Purdue. A bump set from Kramer to report check, and it comes down in play. You know, it often comes down to that left side attacker. Rabarczyk has to be key now that she's rotated to the front court. Good scrappy play by Purdue to keep the ball alive. And there you see terminating. Ball actually hit off the forearms of the Northwestern block. 17 kills for number 17 of the Boilermakers. And Rabarczyk, here's Dutchman. And Northwestern again within four of winning the match. Western is certainly making this very interesting. Playing aggressively on the road. Four points away from upsetting Purdue. 23 kill effort for Katie Dutchman. You can see why Keeler Chan moved her to the right side to give her more chances. Nickel in the middle to Adelajo. Great swing from the red shirt freshman. That is a great swing. <laughs> Boy, oh boy, take a look at this again. Good pass, good communication by the backcourt. You can see where Northwestern's middle blocker was on her way down as the arm swing came through. Ball met at the net. Northwestern with another, and that was a huge point to keep this in for being tied up at 11. Right, and Northwestern has their All-American. Holtis in the front row, so that's a good sign for them. Purdue needs to key on her, but also not to um, ignore Katie Dutchman. Rouse in the serve for Northwestern, three points away from the match. Kiki Jones out of play, and the air costly for Purdue. Don't see that often from Kiki Jones. No, you don't. Usually she is money. I think that's one of the first errors that I've seen from her tonight. and Rabarczyk from the 10-foot line. Green out of the back row, and it's out of play. Just barely missed the corner. Yeah, I mean, it was an aggressive swing. You got to respect her for going for it. 
here's the thing, Northwestern, that side out offense is crucial. You want to make sure you're calling the ball if you're in that serve receive pattern. There you see the setter, Kaylee Ryan, calling the play. Lots of options to go to. Savannah Paffin's been key for her. We'll see where she decides to go. It's to Holtis. Good dig by Carly Kramer. Mita's ball with a diving effort. Rabarczyk on the right side, and Purdue back within one. Rabarczyk able to hit high off the blocker's hand. That's key right here. Physically, she is a lot taller than Holtis, so you see her ability to hit the ball high off the blocker's hands. Backcourt for Northwestern, despite a good effort, could not get that ball up. 13 to 12 lead in the fifth set. Rabarczyk, 18 kills, hitting 300. Huge night for her, and Purdue hopes this is an indicator of things to come from Catherine Rabarczyk. But Audrey, at this moment, we've talked a lot about the strategy from the coaches in a fifth set. The players, some of the experienced players, the seniors for Purdue and Northwestern, they also, from time to time, will get involved in the conversation. What does a leader on each of these teams need to do to motivate the rest of their team? Well, you know what? I think you, you talk to everybody on the team as a leader, but if, if your job is to score points, then you have to deliver that. If your job is to get kills, then deliver that. And the thing that I notice in these types of sets where it's super close, you just can't play tight. You gotta play loose. You have to have enough confidence, not only in yourself, but in your teammates, that they're gonna do their job and that you're gonna be okay. You relish these moments. You don't play scared. You don't, you're not afraid of making the mistake. You want the ball to come to you. And I think that's the difference between um, players that make champion, champion moves and those that kind of fall apart. Stephanie Holtis, a senior, and then Catherine Rabarczyk, a redshirt senior. Nicole, a junior, but then the youth for Northwestern as well has been aggressive tonight. Who will step up in these final few points of the fifth set? And it usually comes down to that serve-pass game, Mike. It'll be Rachel Davis to serve for Purdue. <laughs> it's a Dutchman. Kramer with a great dig. Nickel with a good swing. Bunch of taps up the net. And Northwestern can't get to it. We're tied again. OK, we see scrappy play. Both teams competing hard. Holtis went up for the overpass. Got blocked. But she was going for the kill, and that's OK. So now it's a game to two points. Composure, competitive maturity is what both coaches want to see. is too much. Match point for Purdue. I feel like she was a little tight on that swing, trying to place it rather than get the kill. So timeout by Kilo Chan. Boilermakers back in the fifth, fell behind and drew their way back into it. And now one point from taking the match. Boiler block. Wants to see this end <laughs> right here, not go to extra points. You remember in the third set, it was a 29-27 win for Northwestern as they went to extra points. So Northwestern down by one, but you know that Cuba Chan has a strategy coming out of this one saying, we've done it before, we can do it again. Right, and it'll be curious um, to see where Kaylee Ryan goes to. Holtises are all American. Uh, Holtis just made a hitting error. We're going to take a look at who else she has in the front court. But if you're Purdue, the serve has to be in. It has to be aggressive. You don't want to put in a lollipop serve so that Northwestern is in system. So everything comes riding down to this point here for Purdue. So Purdue looking to win their third five-set match of the season. Fell to Penn State last Saturday on their home floor. Fans want it to end on this point. Watching the balance of Northwestern, the Boilers have gotten a lot of great options. Kiki Jones, Catherine Rabarczyk as well involved. And both of these teams have shown they will contend throughout the Big Ten throughout the rest of the year. Perfect example of it tonight.
goes to Holtis. The All-American catches the line. Now that's key. That's money right there. Nice composure by Stephanie Holtis. A lot of traffic on going on in front of the setter, but Purdue's block was up in front of her, and she hits that sharp cross-court angle. I like that shot a lot. So now, game to two points. 15, not enough points for these two teams. Tough serve. Opportunity for Northwestern. Back to Holtis. Down the line. Match point, Wildcats. All right, Purdue's got to show some competitive grit here. Take a look at this shot. Down the line. Oh, yeah, they're jacked up. Now, Purdue, let's see what they're made out of. Can they get a good pass? Can they side out and tie this? Barczyk tries to go for the back corner, doesn't go over the net, tied again. Wow, backcourt defense for Northwestern. Roll shot there, good pursuit of the ball, but you've got to be able to control it. When you're in trouble, put the ball high to the middle of the court. Again, we have a game to two points, tied at 15. Something that a freshman like Kayla Marine will learn over her time, but didn't help there. We'll serve it in the fifth. Back to hold this. Stop! Holtis has a lot of pressure on her right now. The block for Purdue is releasing. We'll see if Kaylee Ryan has the courage to set somebody else and if somebody else can deliver. She's got Sarah Savannah Paffin in the front row with her. Second match point for Purdue. It's Holtis again. This time mixes it up. And Vanessa out of play. The air by the Boilermakers keeps the fifth alive. Boy, and you know what? Every, anybody who knows me knows that you just don't tip at this point of the game. You just don't tip either side. You swing and you try and knock someone's head off. That's the type of aggressive nature that you want from your outside hitters. Nickel goes for that corner. Nita's ball keeps it in play. Jones. Akande, the closer with the kill. You want that kind of attitude right there. You want Akande's kind of aggressive attitude. Take a look. There's no way she was tipping on that ball. I don't know if that kid knows how to tip the ball. <laughs> don't think we've seen it all <laughs> night from Yawande Akande. Oh, I hope she doesn't tip now. <laughs> Northwestern gets another chance. You might think the Wildcats would go back to her. But Holtis in the back row. Jones. There is Ryan. To a convict. And with the back set to Pathan. Wildcats trying to end it on this match point. And Vanessa keeps the wild the Boilermakers in it. Wow. Well, if there's ever a time for Epinesa to swing hard, it's right now. And number four for Purdue does that. Take a look. She's way back. And she swings high, deflecting off of number 16, Savannah Paffin for Northwestern. Might have heard you, Audrey, as we're tied at 17. <laughs> Anaconda has to adjust, but still gets it to fall. Another match point upcoming for Northwestern. Just epic volleyball continues in the Big Ten. Yeah, this is good stuff. And, you know, we all know that the fifth set usually goes to 15. This one is on its way up to the 20th point, but Northwestern can get it done here. Should they block and dig and transition well. Match point for the Wildcats. It goes to Epinesa, who connects again. Okay, she's moving into the court. Different look, works out well for Sam Epinesa that time. Again, we're back, tied at 18. You mentioned how Epinesa had been quiet throughout this match, but not here in the fifth. Purdue with a match point back for themselves. Ryan goes to Akanbe once more and again. Akanbe connects and converts for Northwestern. And what I like about Northwestern, here they are on the road and they are competing hard. They could have given up a long time ago. They believe that they can win and this is something that Keeler Chan is ecstatic about. 
these teams trying to go 2-0 on the weekend. Northwestern looking for their second straight five-set win. Another match point for the Wildcats. Nita's ball to a Akanbe. Out of play, just beyond the line. Akanbe can't believe the call. It's important at this point, when the call doesn't go your way, to remain composed. We're going to take another look at it. She goes up strong. It is, it's very, very close, but the line judge did not hesitate. The bench thought it was in. Nonetheless, you got to play the whistle, play the call. We're tied up again at 19. This time it's Dutchman cross court. Nickel with the dig. And he drews with the swing out of play. She wants the touch call, doesn't get it. Northwestern with another opportunity to win this one. They have got to put back-to-back -back points together. They need to take advantage of the error attack from Drews. And one point to close it out. In the middle, and it comes down on Purdue's side. The Wildcats with a monumental win in five sets. Well, this one was a classic. Northwestern beating Purdue 21-19 in the fifth set. Great composure from them to stick it out. What a weekend for Northwestern. They win in five at Indiana, and tonight against Purdue, Anna couldn't get it over, and Northwestern wins an incredible fifth set, 21-19. Goes 2-0 on the weekend in the Big Ten and improves to three and three in conference action. What a night for the Wildcats and Keeler Chan. Back in a moment to wrap things up at the Boiler Box. Northwestern wins in five.